Well, one of the reasons why we formed the working group on space and upper atmosphere technologies was the recognition that the pace of incursion of broadband into the lives of the unconnected <coughs> is slowing. There's more than 4 billion people still who don't have good access to the internet. So we're on the hunt for technologies that can improve the tools that the world can bring to bear on that problem. We're also aware that uh, in the satellite world and the upper, air, upper at, air atmosphere uh, world, we're seeing a lot of innovation cascading through those sectors. So we're looking at a whole new paradigm for services around the globe. Well, the key findings from the report were that we're seeing a, a revolution in capacity, capabilities, coverage, and cost for these extraordinary new technologies in space and the upper atmosphere. We're seeing global coverage, but we're also seeing for the first time the type of services, the richness of the services, and most of all, the affordability of the services looking very, very like their terrestrial alternatives. Well, the key recommendations of the report are twofold. The first is to recognize that we've got an extraordinary new capability on our hands to help us fill the digital divide, to connect the unconnected and make inroads in that four billion people who we want to bring into modern society. But equally interesting is the recognition by the working group that it's not just about extension of coverage, it's actually about recognizing that these new technologies can also help in the developed world by adding resiliency and new complementary services such as location-based services and broadcast as well. And indeed, what we're recommending is that policymakers, uh, those who allocate spectrum, those who allocate uh, funding for R&D, think about heterogeneous networks, bringing together an alliance of different technologies, terrestrial and space-based, to solve the world's problems.